Is Bangladesh on a path to a one-party rule? The governing Awami League is likely to win another term in Sunday's election. The main opposition is boycotting, accusing the government of cracking down on its rivals. So what will this vote mean for the country? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I am Hashim Ahalbara. Voters in Bangladesh are getting ready for general elections on Sunday. It's a controversial poll that's dividing much of the country. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is expected to win another term with virtually no competition. The main opposition is boycotting, pointing to what it says are intimidation, fraud and widespread arrests ordered by the government. Frustration has been building up for months, with protesters demanding the Prime Minister step aside and for a neutral administration to oversee the vote. So how will this election shape Bangladesh's future and is the nation shifting to a one-party system? We'll get to our guests in a moment. First, this report from Katya lopez Hotuyan. She is Bangladesh's longest-serving Prime Minister, and Sheikh Hasina is all but guaranteed another term. The 76-year-old has led the country for 15 years, overseeing sharp economic growth that's lifted millions out of poverty. But the months leading up to Sunday's general election have been marked by widespread protests and calls for her to resign. Critics accuse her of authoritarianism, corruption, and of blocking political rivals from running. The main opposition party, BNP, is boycotting the election. It says millions of its members are facing a government crackdown and thousands have been jailed. 25,000 of our party leaders and workers, starting from our Secretary General, down to the grassroots level, have been taken into custody. The military has been deployed to the capital ahead of the elections. But on the streets of Dhaka, the mood is mixed, with many voters expecting more of the same. I was eligible to vote for the first time in 2018, but I wasn't able to. When I went to cast my vote, they said someone else had already voted for me. It was heartbreaking. Hasina supporters point to Bangladesh's fast economic transformation, but there are significant challenges. The International Monetary Fund has approved a $4.7 billion loan to offset the nation's deficit and weak currency. We are very happy with the infrastructure the government has developed, but when it comes to essentials, prices are too high. We can't match our salaries with food expenses. Bangladesh relies heavily on its clothing industry, which reached profits of about $40 billion in 2022, but it's struggling to develop new exports, and certain trade deals and partnerships with China are also raising concerns in Washington. Bangladesh prides itself on being a multi-party democracy, but some are now asking if it's turning into a one-party state. Katia lopez Odoyan, Al Jazeera, for Inside Story. Let's bring in our guests. They're all joining us from Bangladesh, in Dhaka. Muqtadir Rashid, investigative journalist and reporter with the daily newspaper New Age. In Kushia, Selim Altaf. George, a member of parliament for the governing Awami League party. Also in the capital, Dhaka, Rumin Farhana, barrister and former member of parliament for the opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party. Welcome to the program. Muqtada, violence is not something new during the election campaigns and also after the results are announced. Why is it so tense in particular this time? Is it because of the opposition staying away from the race or the general consensus that this is another rigged election? Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I would say the violence uh, is not uh, that much this time because it's uh, violence between the ruling party that is called Aumili and their bagged independent candidates. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, uh, just, uh, no, I want to give you the official figure that I received from the police headquarters that uh, more than 380 incidents uh, that took place uh, 
just uh, 15 days uh, since the you know the ruling party and uh, their like-minded uh, opposition uh, no, independent candidate uh, started their formal uh, election campaigning so in those cases more than uh, 300 and uh, more than nearly nearly 400 people were injured according to the police report and uh, and, and uh, 50 is, uh, 57 people were arrested mostly uh, Aum league uh, leaders and uh, activists and mm -hmm. six people were killed during this period so uh, this, that, this is deadly than of uh, other uh, months uh, we have seen you know uh, since the opposition and the ruling Aum league has been you know running the campaigning before mm -hmm. uh, the formal uh, you know, um, announcement of the schedule uh, for the election uh, that is going to be happen in uh, 7th and 7th of this uh, month. Salim, you've dismissed BMP boycott as an attempt to undermine the elections. But they are saying that the reason why they're staying out is because there are no guarantees this is going to be fair and free. Thank you, everybody, and good evening. Look, no one is going to give any guarantee. The Election Commission is an independent body. Election Commission is asking every political parties to participate in the election. Army League, as a political party, intend to participate in the election. And BNP, on the other hand, they are saying they don't want to participate in the election because they are saying the ele election system they don't believe in the election system. They don't believe in the constitutional system. They want to bring back something which is unconstitutional. And they're saying that we don't want to go to the election unless, unless the unconstitutional system bringing back to the country again. Mm -hmm. So election commission, our league and other political parties, we are saying, no, we are going to hold the election under the present constitutional system. Simple is that. And election commission, asking every political parties to participate in the election. So our milling as a political party participate in the election. And on next 7th January, the election is going to happen. And the people of this country is going to attend the election. They are going to participate in the election. They are going to vote there. They are going to vote. And the, I mean, as usual, the winning, winning, winning guy is going to be the MP. And then they are going to decide who is going to be the prime minister. But and in that scenario, BNP is saying the Army League and their dummy candidate mm -hmm. and this and that is going to participate in the election. So election is not going to be in, you know, in, 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 in that force. So they are saying something which is not uh, accepting the people. Okay. People are not accepting what they're saying because they're... Well, if you don't mind, because we have All Romine right. here from the BNP sh who should be giving us the party's perspective. Romine, you decided not to take... You, you, you participated in 2014, that you decided to... to sorry, you boycotted 2014, you participated in 2018, and now you said we're not taking part in the, tw in, in the 2024. For many, this is just an evasive attempt by the BNP given that they know this is going to be sealed by Awami League. Thank you so much and good evening. The election that is going to be held on 7th of this month is not an election at all. It's a preset design. It's a, you know, it's a drama that will be staged by the government on 7th. It's basically an election between the person nominated from Obama League versus the independent candidate of Obama League versus the Obama League supported Jatiyo Party candidate versus the Obama League alliance uh, candidate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So whoever you vote, you at, at the end of the day, you are voting for Obama League. So that is the reason why we are not participating in the election. And as of today, we have 11 elections in total. And out of those 11 elections, only four elections were accepted by all the parties. And those four were held under caretaker government. The mm -hmm. caretaker government was the result of a Wami League movement in 1996. And it was incorporated in the uh, Constitution through our 13th Amendment by BNP. And it was based on national consensus. Everybody 
uh, you know, accepted it as the correct form of uh, running the election. But when Almili came in power in 2008, for the reason best known to them, they just removed the, uh, you know, the article of uh, caretaker government from the constitution, and they are, you know, running the show after that in their own way, so that they can renew their power every five years. In 2014, we didn't participate in the election because at that time it was very clear to us that the election will not be a free affair one. In 2018, we got assurance from the prime minister herself. She said. Keep faith on me. I am daughter of Bangabandhu. I am not going to rig the election. So mm -hmm. we trusted her. We participated in the election. And more than 50 candidates of BNP were personally injured, physically injured. Right. Loads of people were arrested. Our activists were arrested. There was no level playing field. And at the end of the day, BNP got only seven seats out of 300, which is unbelievable. Okay, Muqtada, you've just heard what uh, Romin has been saying. Is it legitimate demand to say now that we should have had a neutral caretaker government to oversee the election as the sole guarantee that this was going to be fair and free? If, if, if you look at the statistics, what we received uh, from mm -hmm. political party, uh, both of the political parties, like uh, BNP said, it has uh, it's uh, uh, more than twenty five thousand people were arrested uh, since October twenty eight uh, after you know uh, uh, violence broke out uh, during a peaceful rally in Dhaka, and the ruling party says it's not twenty five thousand, it's only eleven thousand, uh, and you, you see the top leaders, including Mirja Fakhri Islam Alungir and. Uh, and others uh, who are no policy maker, they are in behind the bar. And those who are not, they are exiled in either in UK or Malaysia and elsewhere. And those uh, uh, those are remaining, they are not the policy maker of this party. And mm -hmm. the other thing is important that we are not getting any official statistics from the government itself. Given this con uh, context uh, in the mind, uh, we are having an election. And you see, the, I, I talked to a borrower today, mm -hmm. and he was asking me, why don't you go back to your home and cast your vote? He said, look, election is always festive. And I don't find this uh, election is any festive uh, festivity, and nothing is here. It's, it's I, a, I know, many analysts say that this election, in, if, you, if you compare the election, that uh, U.S. election without Republican or uh, Democrats, so this is the kind of election we are having okay. right at this point. So we definitely need us. You know, I am not saying, and I don't want to say that what Aumili is saying and what BNP is saying. But as a voter, I really want to vote in a free, fair manner. That I'm not, I'm not getting here. And I spoke to hundreds of people over the weeks, and they said, no, it is not the environment in which okay. I can vote or choose my leader. Salim, you have just heard what. Both Muqtada and Ramin have been saying. Now, if you seem to, you seem to be pretty much confident your party has the hearts and minds of uh, Bangladeshi peoples, but you see that there is an atmosphere of polarization and mistrust. Why didn't you reinstate the article that paves the way for a neutral, independent, non-partisan government that would take over to oversee the election? And the moment you win, you would have the ultimate justification and legitimacy that you want a free and fair election. The question we're discussing here today about how you're going to held the next election. And everybody, like Rumin and other one, Maktadi is saying to reinstate neutral government, care to get government, mm -hmm. which is mostly trusted people. The thing is, Caretaker government or neutral government, this is completely past and closed transaction. It's a closed transaction. You cannot bring that caretaker government back in your country anymore. Why? Because the highest court of this country, the highest court of this country said the system we have uh, we have been like doing an election like 1991, 1996, or 2000, uh, 2008, which was unconstitutional. And then 
it has become unconstitutional. Now we are looking forward how our election commission we can strengthen them. So we asked BNP and other political parties suggestions, suggestions to how we can strengthen the election commission so they can trust on that and we can do our election on. Uh, we, we want to bring back a but you concrete, know, concrete uh, system. Salim. You know, you know what's the problem with your argument? You're talking about laws as if they were sacred. It was the Awami League which abolished the practice of having a caretaker government, saying that the caretaker government back then was colluding with the military establishment to expand their influence. So it was a politically motivated decision. Now, it's the up to the people of Bangladesh to say what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad for them. Now, if you're really honest about the idea of competing freely and fairly with people, why wouldn't you just re-trigger the same policy? And therefore, when you win, people will say, well, you deserve it, you own it. You don't seem to be really convincing to me, Salim, when you're talking to me about the need to maintain something as if it was really sacred. Look, this is what you were saying and our other political parties, they're saying. But the thing is, we cannot go back to the system. BNP should participate in the election and fight it. And then they can say that this election is rigged. We cannot trust on that. We can trust. We don't trust on election commission. We don't trust on uh, b b bureaucracy. We don't trust on law enforcement agencies. They don't trust no one. So what Awami League can do? Awami League is a political party. Awami League will participate in the election. An election commission is going to hold the election. So this is why I'm saying if they do have any kind of sort of suggestions, how the election commission can be strengthened, and okay. the election commission, how they put a free and fair election. Ramin. That's the thing. They do you... OK, Ramin, let me just go to Ramin for a second. Ramin, do you understand that by choosing not to take part in the election, you are basically sending the message that from now onwards, any decision is, that is going to be out of the constitutional framework? Because the options will be very small for you. You go to the streets, violence will kick in, and therefore there will be no democratic way out for you in, in the future unless you decide with wisdom it is in the benefit of Bangladesh to be part of the political establishment and part of the elections. Um, do you really believe that for the benefit of this country and for the sake of the people, we should participate in an election which is mostly known as dummy election, which is mostly known as a farcical sham election. There is no point because people, it has already predetermined who's going to form the government, who's going to be the prime minister, who's going to be in the opposition. If you want to know, I have a list of names who has already been confirmed to be the member of parliament. If you want to uh, offer me the names, I can do so. But I don't think that will be very nice. But <laughs> we all have those messages, you know. So what's the point of participating in an election where we all know that who's going to win from which seat? So I don't think that this mockery will be a nice thing to do with our people. And on top of that, uh, we are a very pro-people party. We speak to our activists. We speak to our grassroots level uh, people. They all say, please, don't don't uh, be a part of this farce. And mm -hmm. just to let you know that Jatiya Party, uh, which is contesting the election to be the main opposition party in the parliament, mm -hmm. most of the candidates are withdrawing from this election. They say that there is no level playing field. The voters are being scared to come to the parliament. Uh, there is violence, and they are not being able to, you know, sustain. So mm -hmm. they withdraw their candidacy. Okay. Uh, only 26 seats has already been confirmed from the government. And in those 26 seats, the government didn't place any nominated candidate. I mean, the Awami League didn't uh, place any nominated candidate. And in those seats, probably, they okay. are going to win. But still, we don't know because have... uh, so much violence is going on. I have a few other angles to cover with you. Muqtada, a little bit of perspective for our international audience. Khalida Zia of the BNP versus uh, Sheikh Hasina of Awami League. It's the same deep-seated animosity that has battered, beset political life in Bangladesh for decades, particularly the fight between the 
the two main political parties, the Socialist Secular Awami League, founded in 1949, the Conservative Nationals, BNP, founded uh, in 1977. Are we, are, is Bangladesh meant to keep paying the price of the same political animosity that has been there for, for years? I, I think uh, uh, it is. It would be very complicated uh, to predict uh, the days coming ahead, and uh, it's it's very complicated because you see uh, the Awami League has its own popularity and with the, among the, the supporters and beneficiaries, and but the BNP is now very mature political party by this time after suffering, mm -hmm. you know. So many of you know human rights abuse, uh, enforced disappearance, sexual judicial killings, and so. So you you, you are comparing in a different uh, spectrum of this political dynamics. But what we understand, the we are seeing the dying political uh, you know environment in Bangladesh. You know the Bangladesh, you know, or, uh, it has been. Uh, long tradition in Bangladesh that the political parties, you know, the festivity and everything. But we are seeing it's different discourse, and which is really unexpected uh, in terms of uh, uh, political, uh, uh, political uh, thinking and political mm -hmm. environment. And um, with that, the crisis is there that democracy will be affected and uh, of course, uh, you know that affect the rule of law, that will human rights, that will affect the freedom of expression, that will affect our no, no. I I don't know what's going to happen uh, after the okay. election that we say in seventeen, uh, the seventh of uh, right. January. Salim, if you would have asked me, it's normally me who asks questions, but if you would have asked me about the track record of Sheikh Hasina about a few years ago. There was a consensus that she was presiding over an unprecedented economic boom and expanding the garments industry in Bangladesh. But things have changed. There is, the economy is almost in tatters to the point where it needs cash injections from the international monetary institutions. Not a good sign for the voters who will cast their votes that this is the right candidate to vote for. Is, is the economic crisis is not for Bangladesh alone. The crisis mm -hmm. is all over the... So our policy is to keep an eye on that and how do we move forward. And we have, we have our own policies. We have our own friends, our developing partners, our friend countries. We are working on that. Mm -hmm. So people, some people are expecting after the election, the economic crisis is going to deepen more and more. They are expecting that, but I can assure you, we have our own plan, our own policy, and our own thing to go away. So, uh, Bangladesh is still a growing economical country. We have our so many staffs and friends around. We mm -hmm. are talking with them. But the next election, you guys are talking about that if it is not accepted by the international community or whatsoever, then what's going to happen? Because we need some... Uh, money from IMF or injection injection from other countries. Okay. We keep talking with them. We keep talking with them. We are point. continuously. You mm -hmm. got my point. I, I definitely. I really right. got your point. Uh, Ramin, what's next for the opposition? Are you just likely to continue the same campaign that you started in December 2022 by taking to the streets? The same campaign that resulted in unprecedented mass protests, killing of civilians, and also the arrest of thousands of people on the street. It's a, it's, a, it's a gambit here. It could backfire on you. If you can notice that for the last one and a half years, we are continuing with our movement, and it was so peaceful and so nonviolent that government sometimes makes joke out of our movement. They said, how would they expect that they will, you know, topple down the government through this kind of movement? But... Of course, we will be able to do so because we believe that people are with us. And uh, regarding our economic crisis, can I say a few words about that? Very briefly, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, our government has three culprits to blame. One is 
corona pandemic, second is Russia-Ukraine war, and third is world recession. But unfortunately, the reality remains that Bangladesh is going to be bankrupt very soon. Mm. The foreign reserve is below $16 billion, which is not even enough to meet three months' import bill. Situation is such that national oil import organizations found severe difficulties in opening LCs. Um, in the upcoming months, the government has to pay $10 billion as right. their repayments of loan and dues. And inflation is so high that since the local currency is losing its value against the dollar, inflation is rising very, very sharply. And, Thank you. you know, some economists are uh, forecasting that have... hyperinflation is going to take place. I have one so last question. So we are question. not in a very comfortable situation. I see your point. Muqtada, more uncertainty for the country at a time when the key global players, India, China, and the United States of America are looking forward to see what happens next, which could redefine the way that we'll have to tackle with, uh, with the South Asian country. How do you see uh, its future relations with these uh, political heavyweights? Oh, the, we, we see uh, it's already been, uh, you know, changing um, because uh, we see how the U.S. Uh, diplomats are being uh, radical in Bangladeshi politicians, and especially, you know, the ruling party leaders. They try to, uh, you know, uh, bait him. They don't want to do, you know, you know radical them. It's a, it's a very unusual in Bangladesh we've never seen in the past. So, and, uh, and on the other hand, we have seen that uh, uh, other uh, Big power in, in around the uh, you know South Asia, they try to you know, set up their own people in in, in a constitution, and we see an uh, independent candidate say that uh, he is a candidate of India. So mm -hmm. this is the different dynamics. Uh, you, you and China is uh, saying in different uh, way, and the, the, I, I I want to make it short in different way. This, the Bangladeshi people really want democracy and development. Parallelly, but we Thank you. somewhat get a kind of a development, but not democracy. And, and let's see what happens next. In the meantime, Muqtadir Rashid, Salim, Altaf, George, Romain Farhana, I really appreciate uh, your insight. Looking forward to having the same conversation okay. with you in the near future at the outcome of the election. Thank you. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com, for further discussion. Go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on X. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story for me, Hashim Arbara, and the entire team here. Bye for now.